Hi guys, Samantha from Jessie Mo Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create a Riverstone coaster. So it's going to be using one of my Pebble texture stamps from my shop Jessie Mo Design and I've got a few Pebble stamps on there so I'll provide links to those. And this has already been dusted with cornstarch. You're also going to need a sheet of white that has been rolled out on your thickest setting and this is white Primo polymer clay. And all you're going to do is you're just going to press that white into your stamp starting from one end and work your way to the other end pressing out all the air bubbles. Okay, then gently lift that out of your texture stamp. And now work it out gently because it can stick a little, even if you have put cornstarch in there. And there we go, you've got a nice pebble impression. Now just use a craft knife to trim around these edges because we don't want that. And every, any pebble stamp will work. You don't necessarily have to use the one that I'm using here. Any one that you have will be just fine. There you go. Now I'm going to be using pastels and I'm going to be using these ones. You can get them off of Amazon and they're great because they come in many, many different colours. So here we are. I've just taken the lid off and you can see they come in many different colours and you can see that I've been using them for quite a while. So these are the ones that we're going to be using today. So I've chosen some colours. And here they are. So I'm going with a kind of um, reddish, orange uh, tone today with some browns in it. And I think that that will look quite nice. So you're going to bring over your craft knife because you're going to be shaving these pastels. And just shave a fair amount on. And then bring over the next one and shave it a little bit over the previous colour so that you get an overlap so that when we do this you're going to kind of get a blend and you can use any colours you want these are the ones that I'm choosing to use today because I think that they'll look quite nice and now I'm just going to be making one coaster today but you can make as many as you need. And so I'll continue shaving until I've reached to the end of this one. And I'm going to start back to the previous colour so that we kind of get a blend. And you want to be making it spraying on quite a bit of pastel. Don't skimp on the pastel. If you do, you're going to have to go over again. There we are. Okay. I'm just going to move this to the side and bring over a soft brush and just dab. You don't want to be brushing because you want to keep as much of that pastel on here as possible so that you make sure that you cover the entire piece. No white bits left. If there's any white bits left, uh, you need to shave more pastel on. And you can see that I'm kind of going in such a way that I'm creating a blend, which will look quite nice. And so just go back and forth, back and forth. Any excess pastels that you have on here, which we do, we have a bit of excess stuff, we can take care of as soon as we've finished covering the entire piece. And any extra pastels can be used in later projects, you want to save all of those pastels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop those into a little baggie so that I can use them later. So don't worry about using up to, about putting too much pastel on and then having extras, don't worry it won't get wasted. Okay. 
area and then I'm just gonna go around and touch up any areas that I think need to be dabbed a little bit more make sure that it's all well covered okay put that aside just gonna lift this up and then I'll just brush it off there we go and then I just blew to get rid of any extra Okay, and then I'm going to use my blade to just pick up all that pastel and put it into one area and then I'll take that and pop it into a little bag Bring this back over, press down lightly so that it's stuck well to the tile, and then you need to have a wet cloth or a wet wipe. I'm using a wet wipe, but anything that is just wet and will remove pastel is what you want. And now this can be a bit tedious, but there is a little trick to it. You can use this wet wipe on its own, but if you have 99% alcohol ink. It helps with the process quite a bit. And so what you do, is you take your wet wipe. And I've just had this alcohol, and you can use anything above 50. And I'm just going to spray it onto that one corner. And you see there how much more it lifts off. Makes it a lot quicker and easier to do this. And then you need to swap every now and then because one area will get covered in pastels. And so you don't want to be using the same area over and over again. And now I don't want this top area to be completely white. So I'm just wiping off enough that it looks um, different compared to the rest. I don't want it to be completely white because then it's going to be too, it's going to stand out too much. So I'm wiping. And then I'm kind of going back and dabbing. So now I'm just going to use a plain part of my wet wipe to just clean off. And then I'll bring back over the uh, brush that I used. And then just gently brush over the tops. And I'll just wipe again. And now the trick is to not add too much, but not to take away too little. And this is going to depend completely on you, how much you want to remove, how much you want to keep. So I'm just going to take a little bit more, because I added a little bit too much on. There we are, and I'm happy with that. So now I'll pick that up. And just blow to dry off any areas. And you can see that it looks quite pretty already. You can leave it exactly as it is. You don't have to flatten it out, but it looks really nice once you've flattened it. So I'm gonna go over to my pasta machine, I'll take a setting and roll it through. And there's what it looks like. Take it down one more setting and roll through. And that's what it looks like. Now as I'm going and doing this, I'm rolling through from this side to this side, flipping, rolling from this side to this side, flipping and going down each setting so that it stays square. I'm flipping, rolling, flipping, rolling. That way it's not going to get too distorted. Okay, I took it down one more setting. That's how it looks going to flip, take it down one more setting, roll, and there we are. Now I don't want to take it down any further because it's going to stretch out the pattern too much. So I'm going to bring over a plain piece of printing paper and I'm going to burnish to do the rest. 
just to close in any gaps that I have. Because if I roll it too far then these pebbles get too big and then it doesn't look the way I want it to look. Okay, and I just want it completely flat. And now don't use the same side of paper each time because you will remove a little bit of pastels. And so if you place this back down the same way it was before, you'll add pastels onto places that you don't want to add it to. So just don't use the same piece of paper the same way up each time because you don't want to be replacing pastels where you don't want them. And I'm just pressing really hard and burnishing and this should have flattened it out. You can see it removed pastels there. But it's looking really nice. Okay. Um, here we go. Just had to find my blade quickly. Here we go. So I'm just going to pick that up. And you can see how that looks. It looks really nice. I want to sand this later though to give it a nice shine. So we're going to be putting uh, translucent over the top of this. Now I'm going to be using Primo translucent today. Primo translucent has, Primo has two types of translucents. It has the white translucent and the normal translucent. If you're using blue pastels or a cool, um, you're using the cool side of the color wheel, which would be blues and purples and things like that you want to use the white translucent because it has a blue tint to it. If you're using the warm side of the color wheel, like with the reds and oranges that we're using today, you want to use the Primo translucent because it has a yellow tint to it. So that, I just thought I'd mention that because it does make quite a bit of a difference later on. Okay, so I've run out a sheet of Primo translucent on my thinnest setting. And if you want to know how to get it this thin without it rippling, I do have a video on that and I'll provide a link to that. Now, this is as thin as it can possibly get. I'm just going to gently pop it over. And now I'm just going to hold with one hand while I smooth it down with the other because I want the air bubbles to have a clear way to get out. Because air bubbles are a big, big problem. We want this translucent to just be a protective covering. We don't want it to cause problems or anything like that. Got just a little speck here. I want to get rid of. There we go. Okay. Now trim around and you can go pop that back into your translucent area. And then I'm going to bring over another piece of printing paper instead of putting it through the pasta machine. And I'm going to buff. You can use your roller to buff if you wish. But I like to use my hand. And this is just to get it to bond and things like that without stretching it anymore. So let me just have a look at how that looks. And you can use the same piece of paper over and over again in this instance because your pastels have been covered. So I'll just use my roller again. The roller applies more prep, means that you can apply more pressure. So if you're trying to get it really burnished down, the roller works really well. But if you're trying to just do it lightly, use your hand. There we are. Now just lift up to check every now and then, make sure it's all happy and nice and smooth. And then I'm just going to use my palm to smooth it out even more. Because the less sanding I have to do, the better. And the paper does leave a slight texture. So I'm just using my palm to smooth that out. Okay. There we are. That's looking excellent. Now let me just pick this up. And we want to do the back, as you can see. So just clean up your area. You don't want any pastels on the front of this translucent. Because that, I mean, it won't be a disaster. You'll be able to sand it off, but um, you don't want to have to do extra work if you don't have to. So now we're going to prepare the back. So here's a sheet of black that I rolled up on my fifth setting. 
and that is around three millimeters thick. And I've also got these sponges that I got from Towards Polymer Clay. They make a really nice back texture. So, just face it this way up. And I'm going to stand up to do this because I want to put a lot of pressure on here. And I'm just going to roll the sponge into the clay. Make sure that it gets in there really well. There we are. Then I'm going to bring over this other sponge that comes with the set. And I'm just going to lightly press to give the top of that texture a little bit of texture. There we are. There we are. Easy as that. Um, now you want to lift this from your tile before you do anything. There we are. I'm just popping that to the side and bringing it over my piece of clay again. And I'm using a plain piece of printing paper. And I'm going to pop this down. And I'm going to hold it while I gently tap it down so that I don't get air bubbles. And I'm going to flip. Gently going to smooth, make sure that it's well stuck on. Okay, I don't feel any air bubbles. And then I'm going to bring over my Maxi Circle Cutter set. And you can see that this is the largest, which is what we're going to be using, but it comes in three smaller sizes as well. But we're going to be using the largest in this set. I think I'm going to cut here because I want to get some of this colour. I want to get all of the colours. And I'm actually, I don't really want to lose this texture, so I'm going to press down from this side actually because if we press down this way, we're going to lose a little bit of that texture on the back. And I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to trim this so that I know exactly where I am cutting. Because I'm going to be a little bit blind if I turn it the other way around. Won't be able to see where we're cutting. Okay. And okay, that side's that. So I want to be close to that side as I can. There we go. Okay, stand up when you do this to make sure that you give even pressure and press down. And then just go around these edges and make sure that you did get it properly. Now that it's cut out, I want to just give it a little bit of a dome. And I'm going to be using cling wrap for this. Now the reason I'm going to be doing this after I've cut it out is because because it's cut out, I won't be pressing that texture out of the way. Whereas if we were cutting it out properly, we would have pushed the texture and dulled it. So I'm just going to pop the cling wrap over. Gently going to smooth along these sides. Okay, ready to go. I'm going to position my cutter. Okay. And press down. And that will have domed the sides just slightly. I'm just going to go around and press as well and then remove the cling wrap. And now you might need to trim up these sides a little bit. Just 
use your cutter again to gently trim up these sides. There we are, we haven't lost the texture, which is good. <gasps> Just go and smooth along these sides. And we're going to sand this, so don't worry about it looking a little bit funky at the moment. We will be sanding it. And I'm just going to use the side of my blade, I'm not cutting, just using the side of my blade to gently smooth the edges. I find my palm can do it pretty well as well. And just do this part properly before it goes in the oven because it saves so much time later on. Okay. I'll just flip that again. Got a few little bits on the front here, so just need to get rid of these. Okay, and I'm just going to get rid of that little bit here. There we go. Okay, and I'm just gently going to go with my finger. And I'm going to smooth because I don't want any fingerprints, so that needs to be smoothed out before it goes in the oven. Okay, and then one last check around the sides because I can see over here that a little bit of that black is poking out, so I'm just going to go around with my blade. Just Trim that off. And now this is fussing, definitely. But it's because I don't really feel like having to do this later. All I want to do is have is to have to sand and possibly buff. I don't want to have to be trimming all of this away and making sure that it's all sanded away. And especially when it's so much easier to just do it when it's a raw. So I am fussing and I want to show you why I'm fussing. Just make sure that everything is as perfect as you can possibly get it before you put it in the oven. Because it will just make your life much easier. One last smooth and then we can pop it in the oven for 45 minutes at pretty much recommended temperature. And I'd say that this is probably around 6 millimeters thick in total now. Okay, and you can see the back looks nice, front looks nice too. So I'll go pop this in the oven and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to have it on a sheet of plain printing paper and I'm also going to have a sheet of plain printing paper on top of it so that it doesn't get any scorch marks or anything like that. Though in the case of this colour with all the reds and things you probably won't see scorch or just slight burns because it is a different colour but to avoid burns and things like that just pop a piece of plain printing paper over the top and on the back when you put it in the oven. Okay so here is now that it is out of the oven you can see it looks really nice it needs a little bit of sanding of course and the back's going to get a little bit of a sand too and the same as the edges. So I'm going to be using 400 grit polishing paper and this is quite nice because it doesn't remove a lot of material, it just basically takes it um, as you go up the grits for the polishing papers it takes it from a matte finish to a nice shiny finish but it doesn't remove a lot of material so if you have a lot of fingerprints on this, this sort of um, sanding is not going to work, you're going to need wet dry sandpaper and so I'm going to sand the front, sides and back with my 400, I'm going to go all the way up to my 8000 and using the grits in between that to get it to a nice shine and then it will probably give it a nice buff and then I'll show you what it looks like so just spend a good amount of time on this um, process right here because this is what's going to make it look nice so you can see that it's taken away all those shiny spots 
And so now we're going to go and make it nice and glossy. Okay, so I finished sanding and so hopefully you can see that it's cleared up quite a bit. If I twist this around, hopefully you can see that there's a bit of a shine there to it. And on the back there should be a bit of a shine as well. And the sides have got a nice shine to them too. So now we're ready to buff and I'm going to be using just this ro handheld rotary tool that I have and I'm also using a handmade buffing wheel. Now I sell these on my Etsy shop Jessima Design if you want to go and check those out. Um, they should work on basically any rotary tool though they're best on a Dremel and I highly recommend Dremels so if you're going to buy a rotary tool definitely get a Dremel but it will work with any rotary tool that you happen to have. So I'm going to switch it on the lowest speed setting that I can. And this is why I like the Dremel because it has a lower speed setting. But I'm going to switch it on the lowest setting. And this is going to make a bit of noise. So switch your, turn your sound down. So that will have buffed it up quite nicely as you can see and the sides are all good and this is like really shiny now. So another last step is to put some renaissance wax on this and this is because it will shine up a bit more. And I'm just going to use an older egg. I'm going to pop this on. And it's going to be a bit cloudy at, the f at first because we need to buff it, obviously. And I'm just going to wipe a little bit onto the back. The buffing wheel will distribute it nice and evenly. So now we're ready to buff. So hopefully now you can see what a beautiful shine that has. Okay, and on the back it's got a really beautiful shine too and I've buffed the sides as well. You can see that at, over there has a reflective quality which is exactly what you want. Now, this takes a bit of work to do obviously 
but it doesn't take too much work but you could put resin on here and get an even better uh, glossy look on the front uh, but if you want to put resin on the front don't dome the sides so that step where I used the cling wrap skip that step entirely and just go with it when it has just been cut out with the cutter because dome sides like these the resin will run off and it will just cause problems and the resin will give an automatic dome anyway so just go with a cut piece no dome put the resin on and you'll find that it gives a dome anyway so you don't have to worry about that. So I just thought that I'd mention that because some of you might want to uh, use resin. But it looks really, really nice. I'm quite happy with how this turned out. And you can see how beautifully that back has come out. So that's how I make a coaster. You can make a coaster in a bunch of different shapes if you want to. I have a bunch of different maxi sets on my Etsy shop that you guys can go and check out if you want to get some different shapes. Um, this Riverstone technique also works with a bunch of different texture stamps. I like this pebble one best but any texture will work. Um, so you can go and have a look through your textures, see what you can find and play around with the technique. And I do have a bunch of different textures on my Etsy shop and I'll provide a link to the Etsy shop so you guys can go and check that out. And so I do hope that this tutorial was helpful to you. If it was, please do let me know. And if you would like to support me, I would love for you to be my patron. I post videos every single month on my patron account along with all sorts of other things, including a 25% coupon for my Etsy shop. So if you guys like to buy from my Etsy shop, that's definitely helpful. And please do leave your comments. I love reading your comments on my projects. And please do leave a like. That is also very helpful. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.